everyone, Devin Rex for Art here, and today I'm going to try to remake this journal page. Um, this was a book that I made while following Kathy uh, Berg and Colleen the Scrap Chick as they went through Pam Carricker's book, Art at the Speed of Life. And when I was on their channel in August, I showed this book, and one of the pages that a lot of people liked was this elephant page. This one here. Um, just going to do a quick little flip through here. Um, so if you want to see that stream with Kathy and Colleen, I believe it was back in August. And one of the mods, Helen, uh, she goes by Picola. She was uh, saying you should you know, do a video of the elephant page. So I did buy the Kindle version of Pam Carricker's book and it's an awesome book. Uh, she shows you how to create a journal, which is uh, what I did here. And she uses uh, watercolor paper because it can stand up to all the... Um, media you're going to add to it. So what I'm going to do, instead of doing this on a journal, I'm going to do it on a piece of watercolor paper. And she also goes, there's lots of different projects in this book, which I didn't even scratch the surface of. Okay. The idea of this book is you do layers and you do the whole book as you go. So as you do it, you don't really think where the page is going to. When I started, I didn't know this was going to be an elephant. So that's the tricky part in recreating this, is now I know I want to make it an elephant. As I did each layer of the this book, I did film it, and I was able to piece together uh, different stages. So this was the layers. So this was day one, where you add color, stamping, and graphite pencil words. And most of the words are going to get um, covered. And then the next step was adding collage images, um, doing image transfers. Next step, if we go here, is to add texture. So there's different ways of adding texture. On this page, how I added texture was I made faux paper mache. And then the next stage, resist technique. So um, these are some gesso and wax crayon stamps. What I saw when I looked at this is I could kind of see an elephant. Like here is his ear, and this wasn't on purpose, but here is his ear, here was a leg. So I thought, oh, that might make a cool elephant. So I made my own mask to create an elephant. So that's the last step. So in recreating this page, I'm gonna have to go backwards because I want it to look like an elephant. So I'm gonna start with the elephant shape, decide where to put my images, um, where to put these textured pieces, so we're gonna go that way. So next I'm gonna make my elephant stencil slash mask. One way to do it is to use a picture of an elephant. So I'm using my Unsplash um, app and then I've typed in elephant. I liked the profile of this one here. So I downloaded it. So I would press that, saved it to my photos. I edited it so it was you know bigger so I cropped it down so it was about the size. And then I just went ahead and I sent it to my printer in black and white. Now I want to, like I said, I'm going to do this onto a piece of watercolor paper. Um, I'm not going to make it that big. I was thinking about making it um, 8 by 10. So I thought, see how this elephant fills up most of the journal? So I want to be make it a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this onto tracing paper and then I'm going to enlarge it using my photocopier and print it out onto something thicker like this. So this is just some brown cardstock. I'm going to print it onto that and then we'll cut it out. So this wasn't the same image I used when I made um, my other mask. Um, this one was a little bit different. You don't have to keep it exactly like the um, picture. I'm going to just make his foot more elephant like here. I did add a fourth leg here because I felt like just wanted it to have four legs and then the other thing I did is I thought the mouth looked a bit funny so I just kind of just decided to join it there because we're just doing a silhouette so that's gonna be my elephant I want it to be a little bit bigger I want it to fill up most of this so I'm gonna go to my photocopier 
So this was at 120%, uh, so 20% larger. I thought it could be a bit bigger. I tried 130, I thought that was probably too big. So then uh, 125 seemed just right. So while I you know, left it in there, I inserted this paper and then I repeated the copy so that um, this one is 125 or 25% larger than the original tracing. So now I'm going to cut out my um, elephant. So I want to do it carefully so that I'm left with a um, mask that's one piece. And we'll do cut out. That's a little bit thicker there. For curves, I find it easier to curve the whole um, board rather than try to angle my hand that direction if it's a huge curve if it's just a small curve now my hand doesn't like going that way so I'm definitely going to turn it for this one and if you're not exactly on the line that's okay so here's the tricky part And then once you have a stencil you can, or a mask, you can reuse it. I just um, wanted to make a new one to show you how I made mine. Um, there's probably a lot of other ways to do it. I think some people will use um, thin sheets of a plastic or a mylar. And that works too. I'm just um, happy enough using just some thicker cardstock. So I'm holding this down quite firmly so that it doesn't, because this is a loose piece here, this ear now, it's a bit loose, so I want to make sure it doesn't skip. And here I'm gonna not go quite on this line, I wanna just keep an even spacing away from the first line that I cut. profile just a little bit because I feel it just might look better if I have this line coming off of there. You just alter it to what suits your eye. So something like an elephant it's pretty simple lines. It doesn't, this doesn't really take that long. I'm noticing that this foot, this leg is a lot wider than these other ones. So I'm probably going to just bring it in a bit. Just altering on the fly. And the reason I want to try to just keep it a single cut is I want to have two things for the price of one. So you could use this as a stencil. Um, ideally, I would have kept this is one piece to make it more elephant-like take that so that in the future if I decide to use this as a stencil I can do that and so this is an example using an elephant image but really you can use any outline you want. So for example, when I did um, one of my pages in here, I did a VW Bug. So I did that the same way. I used a, an image of a VW Bug and I cut my own stencil. So on this one, I used the actual outside. So 
It's like using the outside of the elephant. I use that and paint it in. For this page, for the elephant, we're doing the opposite. We're using the mask to keep the color we want, and then we're gonna paint out around it. That's why I say mask slash stencil. So the positive is the mask, the negative is the stencil. Next thing I'm gonna work on is the placement of the collage images, cause that's really what makes this page pop, I think, is the use of those images. The best way to eyeball it is actually to use our stencil. So let's say we go that direction. So what's gonna be showing? I think I want the ear to be a lot of the texture, like on that one. So I don't want her, we're gonna save that spot for some texture. And I think she'd look really cool there. I'm gonna use this one to show you how I got to that. We're gonna rip these down. Let's just go ahead and do that. I want space to show all the other fun elements and textures. So I'm just gonna rip that down a bit more. All right, so I'm gonna colorize this. I wanna achieve purple on my image. So I'm just gonna just roll out layer of my purple. And when you pull off, you have your transfer. So that actually worked quite well here. Here we've got a bit of a bubble, but it doesn't matter because like I said, the aim was to get the color onto this picture, which is what we did. So we'll let that dry. Down. Usually three is a good number, but I feel like we need something here. Like this has four images. I kind of feel like we need something there. All right, so that's gonna be our layout. So I'm not going to glue them down because I want to do the base layers first. So now we're going to go to step one, which is adding the base layers. So we'll do uh, like a pink wash with a bit of purple and then some purple and maybe black stamps. So Pam Carriker, uh, when she's describing how to do your layers is you're just using leftover paints and you just throw them in this journal. But we're doing this project specifically to make this page. So uh, one of the things she recommends adding to your paint is a bit of glazing liquid. So she says use one part paint. We'll use these two colors. So one part paint, one part water. So I'm not gonna quite use one part water, but I'll use quite a bit of water bit of glazing. So I'm not, it's not one part glazing, it's just a little bit of glazing liquid. So I'm going to use this. And a lot of the pages that I did, I actually just used a baby wipe to spread the paint. So I think we'll do that. Just do a nice little white wash. So I won't be able to recreate this page exactly, but um, just trying to get the feel of it. So I'm going to go in with the pink first and I'm just going to kind of randomly, what the glazing medium does is it helps it not to um, dry too fast and you can kind of blend it. And then a little 
little bit more this pink directly. See what happens. See without the glazing medium, see how much more opaque it is. So that's good for the other side. And we're gonna dry that. And then add some stamping. So I'm not going to use the same stamps that I used in my original one. I'm going to just use a variation of these stamps. Um, I believe I used mostly green ink. I'm going to use pink and black. And the idea is you just randomly stamp everywhere without thinking too much of what's going to be covering what. So I'm going to do that. So even though we know a lot of the background is going to be covered up, you can also see in here that you do see some of it. So we want textures. The idea is we're building up layers and layers of textures. So I'm just going to use a bunch of different stamps. have anything to do with elephants? I don't know. Maybe they do. And the fun part about doing this uh, book is that it's very freeing. Like this isn't as freeing when I'm trying to recreate it, but the process of that Pam Carriker outlines in her book is very freeing because you're not you're not really thinking about where the page is going. Um, this is a little bit more structured because I am actually thinking about you know uh, eventually I'm thinking about where things are going to go. The next thing is adding some um, graphite wording. This I used a song I think. Let me just look up. A song that's gonna be random. Shuffle play. <laughs> that's funny. So the song is Hands Up by Ottawa. That was a one hit wonder from the 80s. So now I'm gonna look up the lyrics to that. Um, you know, you can write down your feelings and your thoughts and whatever, but I'm just gonna write down using a graphite pencil. And it can be messy and illegible, it doesn't really matter. It's a good way to reminisce. You can like pull up a playlist from like 80s or 90s and just do like, just pick a song that way. Like I just picked a song, random song from one of my playlists. This isn't my favorite song or anything. It brings back a few good memories. So it's, it's fun. So that's pretty good. It's just messy, not very legible. Most of that's gonna get covered up. So next is adding the image transfer collage pieces. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so we're gonna glue those down and just gonna lift that up carefully, keep that position. And I'm just gonna use a glue stick. Uh, my texture uh, element that I did. In Pam's book, she does this faux um, toilet paper mache where she uses a rubber stamp, toilet paper, and then um, gel medium or white school glue. 
I didn't uh, do that technique. What I decided to use was my embossing folders. So um, these are all the embossing folders I own. The ones I used on the elephant were these three. And um, today I'm also gonna try that one as well and then decide which ones to use. So I'm gonna put these ones aside. Uh, when I did mine, I did use um, golden matte medium, which is a bit uh, expensive product. Um, so today I'm gonna use um, just plain old white glue. Uh, she does mention in the paper mache, um, toilet paper mache, how to, you, know, you can use white glue for that. So I'm gonna use white glue this time. And um, I'm not gonna use toilet paper. And when I did mine, I used paper towels, which have a texture of their own. Um, and that does show through um, in this collage. Like here, you can see a little bit of that extra texture from the paper towel. If you can see that. So we're gonna stick with the paper towel. Um, you could use, um, instead of paper towel, you could use, uh, Fin & Bear has a product called icing paste and I have seen them use uh, embossing folders and you put a layer of the icing paste in there and it makes these skins um, that you peel off and they're like rubbery. Um, I didn't have any icing paste, but that's I think what, what inspired me to use my embossing folders was that technique that I've seen. What to do is to use the paper towel, spritz it with water, rip it into some pieces, um, keeping the two plies together. I just want kind of random sized pieces, but I want them to be able to fit in the folders. Next, um, I said I'm gonna just spritz it with a bit of water. I'm working on my craft mat because it is um, easy to clean up. And then I'm just gonna apply some plain old all-purpose white glue. So we're making a faux paper mache. Use my silicone spreader. And I'm gonna spread that. So got them all covered. Next step is to mostly dry them with a heat gun. So once they're mostly dry, so they're not super sticky to the touch, but they're still a little bit damp. These two are still a bit sticky, so I'll leave those for a moment. Then you can wrap them in saran wrap one at a time. So I've got that wrapped. And then you can put it in your embossing folder. Go run that through my embossing machine. Oop, that one ripped. Maybe it was a little bit too wet still. Let's just pull that. We'll just use pieces of it. In. All right, let's finish drying these puppies. Could just let it air dry um, but I'm trying to see what's the fastest way I could do this so 
I was thinking about different ways to add texture and you could definitely use stencils with molding paste or things like that. If you want to do more of that faux paper mache and you don't have a, um, a big shot or a die cutting machine, you could use the paper towel method that I showed and then you could probably, you know, press it into something that has texture like a placemat or you could use uh, the end of an eraser to make texture. You could, there's all sorts of ways to make texture. I don't know that you really need the glazing medium for this part, but I'm just gonna stick to it. Is that the side? Oh, I think I want this side up actually. Um, there's a positive and a negative side to all of these. That's the positive side. See, I could have done that side, but oh well. And then this side, the positive side and the negative side. And here's where we left off. Here, um, just to have some random pieces. I want to make sure at least that the ear has a neat pattern. So because we're working backwards, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna put this here. And I'm gonna just tear out the shape of the ear. So that piece I know I want there because I want the ear to have mostly that mostly that pattern it doesn't have to fill it up completely but I know I want that there so I'm going to glue that piece down and I'm going to use some uh, Aline's Aline's tacky glue and you see when you glue it down it still maintains that texture that we developed. Great. All right, so I'm gonna be a little bit more random about these other pieces. I guess I'm not random anymore. I guess I'm putting it where I want it to go. I'm gonna put a piece here for sure. I just love how crunchy that feels, that texture. And you can't even see any of the butterflies anymore. And you wonder, what? Well, why did I put all those layers if I'm just gonna cover them up? But when you're doing this as part of like more of a freestyle, it just frees you up. You just um, aren't worried about it. So I just thought I'd follow the process even if we're not gonna be seeing, you know, everything. So that was our text texture step. I think the next step is the resist. So for resist, um, on this one, I used a stamp with some black gesso. 
and I use some wax crayon. This paint stamp I think I did later, so I'm just going to do the black gesso stamp with the crayon. And then I believe I used some sort of metallic paint or spray and let it drip. So I found my homemade foam stamps. This was the one I used on that other elephant. Um, maybe a few some flowers on this one. Okay, so that is one type of resist. It's just a, an extra layer of resist. So we're going to add some paint in a moment. I think I'm not being precise, I guess. Now what I like is I like it when you add the heat gun back. The, um, the you could use wax crayon and oil pastel and then sort of just uh, melt that a little bit. You can see here where it's melted versus here where it's not quite melted. There's just an extra layer of waxiness to it. I'm gonna use a purple shift paint with a little bit of black. And I'm going to let it drip down the page. So I'm going to apply it kind of like that. And I'm going to spritz. So as it's drying, you can really see where that color shift makes a difference. I'm going to add a bit more here then. Especially where there's the, the wax resist. I really like how it looks there. And I'm going to spritz it again. middle of the faces. And let's dry that. The second last step was adding uh, this some stamping. Um, she, you know, one of the steps is to add your mark. So stamping or words. I'm not going to add any journaling, I don't think, but I'm going to add a bit of stamping with this before we mask it out. I wanted something a bit brighter. Um, so I was thinking either this dilutions the bright pink or this purple, but when I look at it here, I just think the bright pink would be a bit better. And you can see how, now that it's dried, you can see the shimmer from that um, color shift paint. So that's going to give it some nice sparkle. And I'm going to use, instead of the same stamp that I used for the black, I'm going to use a little bit smaller. Um, still a handmade one that I had created just using some foam. So I'm not going to use these portions. I'm just going to use the swirl here to keep it um, sort of in a theme. So here's our piece. Doesn't look like too much, but now we're going to transform it into the elephant. So I'm just using this to confirm you know, where I'm going to put the mask. I feel like this is a bit boring. Now, there's no rule that says 
nope, you've done your layers. You can't go back to other steps. There's no rules. That's what I like about mixed media. There's no rules. I feel like I might want to just hit the tops of some of these with a little bit of um, brighter pink. I like how the tail is. I like the different areas. I like how the ear is outlined. So I'm going to use my elephant now. All right, so now we're going to we're going to add the pewter. And we're going to want quite a thick coat. So you can see all the detail that's going to go away, but it will still be visible as a texture. So I'm just going to use a sponge. And I'm going to start here where I think it's going to be the trickiest. Make sure I get a good layer in there, but not too much because I don't want it to Almost there. So I'm being careful, uh, especially at the tail, to hold it down because it's such a small piece. It's, it's easy for it to um, move around. Same with the legs. But you can really tell how even though we're covering the other areas, you can still see the texture beneath it. So I'm just gonna make sure I get the edges. All right, big reveal. It would look like an elephant. Good. Okay, so it's, I think it's dry. I'm going to just outline the elephant in black. It's a bit tricky where it's textured. I'm using a black um, acrylic marker. This is a Posca. Here's the final result. This is our elephant. 
pink and purple elephant using lots of layers and textures and you can see different shimmeriness of the paint, the wax crayon, the paper towel, and uh, I added a, a fun border, but I might cut that off, I don't really know. Uh, this is where we started, that was the inspiration. I thought it might be fun to try just a different color and try different images. And uh, that's one of the joys of mixed media is you can use something that inspires you as a dropping, as a jumping off point to try something else. Um, I might do something similar and make a giraffe painting or a house painting. Um, so go play, go have fun, and uh, thanks for watching.